one. Hi, everyone. I'm Barbara Bray, and this is the Emergency Home Learning Summit, and it's my Rethinking Learning series. I have someone so special here today. Erica so Sandstrom. Erica. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. I just, I just love Barbara Bray. She's the best. <laughs> oh my goodness, you're, you're gonna make me cry. I love I'm it. Gonna make me cry. We even wore the same color. <laughs> I know that is so weird. That's happened to me three times now in this summit. It's so crazy. I'm not surprised. The energy. <laughs> I'm gonna go to our next slide because then we can kind of show you off. And before I do that, let me just tell everyone that you'll be able to get a copy of a pdf of this slideshow and the handout by using the little bitly at the bottom left and we have that on most of the slides and then if you haven't registered yet you can register by using the link that's also on the slide on the right and if you want to get a hold of me or erica we have our twitter handles there and she's a green screen gal and taught me. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> she's the most fun person to play with. She'll do anything. Oh, we can't wait to show you all the fun stuff. Some people might have seen it already if they've watched the promo to this this chat. I know yeah. you made that. It was yeah. so wonderful. Well, made it made it because of you, with you. It's fun yeah. to play with you. So you know, fun. not everybody will play with me, so I I, I can't wait for more. <laughs> well, that's why bungee jump in, bungee jump in next well, time. <laughs> I told my family, I'm going to go bungee jumping. And they started, no, don't you? I said, don't worry, I'm safe. So <laughs> this is all about cultivating compassion during uncertain times. So let's get going here and share what we're doing. Hey. Well, <laughs> I've been sharing this and everyone because yeah, the problem is this pandemic happened. And then we all went, oh, we can do it. Then a month went by and we go, I don't know. And now it's like, ah, <laughs> and yeah. If, right? if people haven't, if people haven't uh, uh, changed uh, so much from this, uh, I, I, you know, I'd be surprised. But it's just the whole mindful mirror of all of these emotions. Every, I'm looking at this picture and I'm thinking, yep, yep, that happened. Oh, that one happened this morning. Oh, yep, that's <laughs> yesterday. And you know, and but it's it's also beautiful to watch people relax and and also live in the present moment more than they ever have. They finally realize that's all we have because you never know what's going to happen in 2020 you know <laughs> well it's, it's 2020 almost 2021 and so we're kind of like oh my gosh so anyway we have some ideas for people we're, we're yes. going to share you know ways that people can cultivate compassion so yes let's oh uh, and and erica put this together i went oh my gosh do i do all that <laughs> You do a lot more than that. I couldn't even fit it all with all the things you've done. You're amazing. And look at you. I just, and Club Mindful, what is that? Tell them about that. Oh, well, thanks for asking. Um, I am, uh, I have founded the club called Mindful Superheroes Club at my school. And um, originally it was kind of meant to be just a mindfulness club, but I also wanted to have a green screen video club, but I didn't want to call it that because I really wanted the kids to to practice mindfulness. So they do, they they would, before COVID, they were coming uh, every week after school and we would have yoga mats out and we do guided meditation. We do uh, yoga, a lot of restorative yoga, but then we would take everything we learned because they would always have a mindful lesson to go with it. And we would turn them into these videos, these videos and these creations and this graphic design to help heal the planet and to teach others. Because I always say that you can't really teach compassion without giving people an opportunity to practice it. So this is our way of practicing compassion and empathy and oh. all those fun things. Yeah. It's I so love it. And we're going to, uh, luckily we got to play a little before and Erica <laughs> even found a few wonderful videos to share. So everyone get ready. This is such, a, this is for our own little journey here into com cultivating compassion. I love it. So why do we need compassion more than ever right now? Wow. And you know, it's, um, especially with strangers, everyone's in the same boat. And it's interesting, Barbara, because it's globally. I've, I've never felt more connected globally than I do right now, especially with educators and the people I've met. And there's really, I mean, I keep telling the kids, earth was canceled. It was just canceled. <laughs> 
and uh, we're all going through it. Every country, every culture. So yeah, we need compassion right now. What do you think? Oh, the problem is that we have a little bit of division yes. in this country, uh, a lot basically. A lot. And, and we don't understand each other. And um, if we can be, listen more, be kind, be aware that you can't change some people and, um, but take care of yourself first yeah. because you're the only one you really can control and change. And so um, I like that. It's just like the, the picture on the upper left, my life matters. Yes. Everybody's life matters. And yeah. um, if we can model compassion, mm -hmm. it'll help people that are very not sure or uncomfortable or scared. So true. And, and, you know, I love what you said about how you have to start with yourself because um, our energy affects others. Uh, if, for example, if you see someone arguing and you walk by them, like you can feel the dagger. So I'm really into energy. And it's like, you, if you don't take care of yourself first or put your own oxygen mask on first, you're not going to be able to help others. But the whole thing with divide, you know, find our commonalities and celebrate our differences. Thank you. God, we're different. <laughs> yeah, well, it's so beautiful the differences. I love it, you know. So, well, the thing I like is that um, I love the hearts and your beating hearts here because that's what connects us is our hearts, and we're here. We can be here for each other. So, I'm going to go on. I just love all the pictures. Thank you so much for putting these up in the video. Yeah, I actually just thought of one. I wish was in there. It's um, one I use in something else. It's a sculpture of two people with their backs to each other looking sad and they have little kids inside them facing each other. Oh, I think I, you've probably seen it in one of my presentations. I wish I had it up here right now, but it's, um, I can add it later, but it's, we will all start it off as little kids that only knew love and That's then right. you know, society and stuff. We've learned all those other things. And it's, it's just, if we remember that little kid inside of all of us and that remember that that person that wronged you was a kid once that didn't know better and just see them for their heart. It's very powerful. So very that, powerful actually leads into this question. How do you cultivate compassion for you? A lot of us have trouble with that. Forgive yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we got, I think we're making a lot more mistakes than we ever did before because we just don't know what to do. And this is for everyone. It's not just teachers or parents, kids too. Um, a lot of us are not sure how to act. So I like this. And so I want to see, I'm kind of curious what the next slide is. I always forget now. I know me too. I totally did. <laughs> oh yes. This one. Tell us about um, it. Why did you pick this? I think I was feeling that way at the moment. Um, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of people that give you lots of really cool things. And I've, I've, I've showed some in other webinars, but like for getting yourself out of that spiral, that thought, especially when you first wake up, um, there's the five second rule by Mel, um, Mel uh, Robbins. She's amazing where she says, you know, snap yourself out of it. Five, four, three, two, one, just get up and do the next thing. And I have this other one where, uh, my friend Eileen teaches where you put your hand out and let's say you're having a, a crazy worry, like, oh, I got to do that thing today. And I'm so worried about it. Or it's Monday, put that out here and then come up close to your face and say, well, what can I do right now? I can get out of bed and brush my teeth. Okay. Now what? Okay. That's out here. I can't control it right now. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to come back to what I can do right now, but oh, go I ahead. Love that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's almost that the problem is, it's, it's since we're alone a lot, we're in our house, we're with uh, our family or alone. Um, we don't have a lot of those connections like we did before that could actually keep us from thinking in spiraling down like that. Yeah, and so, that's what that's why the mindfulness part where it says here, you know, I agonize over the past. If we have anxiety and worry, which we all do, mm -hmm. uh, we're living in the future. And if we have depression, regret, shame, guilt, and all that, we're living in the past. And just recognizing that. And uh, my favorite quote: um, "You can't." John John Cabot Zen Zen, he's the king of mindfulness. Um, you can't stop the waves, but you can learn how to surf. So every day, right now in 2020, this is our day, whether you want it to be or not. But you can learn how to surf through them. So when you start off, and I started off this way, that way this morning, you know, and you just try these strategies and you stop yourself and say, okay, what can I control right now? 
Yeah. I get the shower. <laughs> I like that. I, I, I started with, you know what went wrong? And this went wrong. <laughs> and then we started talking. I forgot all about it. It's, it's, uh, you're right. It, distraction. Yeah. I'm thinking well, of something that brings you gratitude, you know, gratitude, yeah. um, what you can change. And that idea, the moment staying in the moment. I love that. Bringing yourself back and whatever you have to do, because it's a lot harder to do this to get back up through your day. If you start down here, you fight the whole day to get right back up. And oh. I have to do these tricks myself every day. And gratitude is probably the easiest one. What am I grateful for right now? Okay, the coffee was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I made it to work on time, you know, just every little thing. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm bad. <laughs> I have a gratitude jar and I nice. write. A, you know, I write a note in it um, often and, and then I go in and I check which, what I did some time ago. And it's really interesting that I, you know, sometimes I'll write the same gratitude over and over again because I forget that I put it in the jar. Really <laughs> I, have, yeah, I have a journal and it's called the thankful app. And I, I even do voice to text because I get lazy, but there's a picture on it and it being, it dings on my phone every night at nine o'clock. And I, some days it's like, okay, I saw a squirrel. That was cute. And, <laughs> and other days you can't stop. So, but it really does get you out of that. It does oh, gratitude. Just think of something, anything. Yeah. yeah you and I are good at that. Cause I'll just say something you're like, oh, and you forget about what you're worried about. <laughs> you know, I don't know if anyone can see what's uh, after the, um, at the top, but it, I think it's self-compassion is a type of self-care. Is that what it says? Cause it yes. got cut off a little bit. Oh, why did you, why did you come up with that? Cause that's. Well, um, probably for exactly what this beautiful quote that you have here, but, uh, it is considered self-care. So it's not about bubble baths and all that. It's about being kind to yourself and having compassion and or even compassion when you need, when you're tired or your, your needs yeah. aren't being met, you know, it's self-care, but you need to give yourself a break. I mean, well, we're going to get to negative self-talk because I'm, I'm the worst at it. But yeah. Well, we do that. The other, this kind of reminds me of one thing I, and this is Dr. Basil Marin um, doing the hard work before the hard work. One of the things that I've done is, is um, and I've learned and share is put your, put your child, the ch your, ch you, the child on your knee and talk to your child and, and, and get at that we all were, like we, you said in the beginning, we're, we all were that child and we, you know, we have compassion for you. Maybe what is it, how we can do the heart work now? Because this is very scary for children. And, and what happens when you're an adult, you don't want kids to know that you're scared or you're having problems. And right. if we just show the compassion and forgive and say it's okay to feel that way, Yes, it's okay to feel that way and try not to, you know, I'm guilty of trying to do that for people to try to fix how they're feeling. No, you let them feel that way and, and they have to, they have to um, recognize it and then forgive themselves for the negative self-talk mostly and then choose again. Gabby Bernstein says it perfect in her book, uh, the, um, oh gosh, I knew I'd go blank. <laughs> That's okay. The super attractor, super attractor. She, she yeah. talks about choose again, choose again. So I love that. Do the hard work before the hard work. And that reminds me, Barbara, of this. It's a meditation that I do sometimes for forgiveness because people, you know, you hear the word forgive and they're like, oh, I can never forgive that or this. And forgiveness is not about really the other person. It's about you. It's about yeah. cutting that tie to be attached to that pain and to attach to that situation. And they don't even really even need to always know. But what I do is I picture that person and I use a lot of purple and stuff for healing. Uh, um, and I see their heart and I see them as a little kid and say, mm -hmm. okay, at some point in their life, they didn't know better. They learned that somewhere. So I'm going to forgive that and cut the tie. So that this looks just like what I, I like the heart, the purple. Sorry, oh gosh, you're going to have to move on or I'm going to keep talking. I, don't <laughs> I, well, I, I It's just that you, what you just said is that really touched me because I, 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 the idea of cutting that tie, that's really great. So this one, I love it. You want to share? <laughs> well, I shared a little bit about the club, but this is kind of what we do. Um, these are just a few clips. And if you're on my Twitter or my Instagram, you'll see all the shenanigans. But the kids, um, they're so cute because they write the scripts and things like that. For example, I was teaching I statements. 
And it was funny because they were trying to write a script about it and they started arguing on the green screen. And I'm like, I swooped in. I said, okay, teachable moment. <laughs> Taught them eye statements right there. They practiced it. I said, you just wrote your script. But um, mm -hmm. the thing I love about my Mindful Superhero Club is that we also go to assisted living. So we did pre-COVID and um, volunteered our green screen services and we would help, um, we would make that connection with the elderly and we would cover up their wheelchairs and their walkers <laughs> with green. So nobody knew they were, you know, here's somebody in a wheelchair who's 90, who's bungee jumping and skiing. <laughs> and and uh, so that's a lot of what our club does as well, but they do go through levels in, in the club. For example, they, they have to come to club and practice mindfulness. They have to keep gratitude journals and then they earn a cape and then they oh. earn a name and their names are like, I'm mindful Miss S. And then we have Karen Kara, uh, meditative Marcus, um, you know, <laughs> they're, they're loving Louisa. And so they have these, these names and with the green capes, as you can see in the middle one with him moving with the smiley faces, they, we green screen them. So you'll see that in another video, but you actually have that right above the words glove mindful. You have a little bit. Yeah. A little yeah. bit of it. pretty cool. How, how they love it. They love it. So, oh, this is just wonderful. And, and that I, video you showed me of the, what they did with the assisted living group and maybe people need to see that one someday. That's, I don't know where you share it, but that's it's, it's on my YouTube, but I am starting to finally organize all of that to show people the magic of it. My father is, uh, sorry, dad, I always say your age on my webinars and stuff. He's 81 and he's my favorite green screen person right now. He's, I'm constantly getting text messages ever since I showed him the do ink app, he can't stop. So I, I hashtagged him, hashtag green screen dad. You'll see a couple of his things on there. <laughs> he's a riot. So it doesn't matter how old you are to, to have this kind of fun. So yeah. I love that. Well, I think that's the thing we can do intergenerational work, you know, projects and f have fun together, especially now, if we can figure yeah. out some ways. This is my therapy. I laugh yeah. so hard every time. Like when you and I made our thing for the last slide, I couldn't, I, an hour after we got off the, the Zoom, I couldn't stop laughing. Me too. <laughs> well, we could tell a little bit about some of the bloopers too, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So do you want to tell about this before I show them? Yeah, just a quick thing. Um, so this is one of the projects I, um, we were one of the days, even in my regular class, this is not just for my club. I teach this um, with digital media. We were talking about what negativity is and, and about energy and all this. And I said, you know, what are some ways we could stop negativity or negative self-talk or what are the things we need to get rid of or to, to forgive ourselves, push away. So the first one is he came up with this idea. He says, I want to chop it up. So go ahead, go ahead and play the top one. It's so cute. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> that one is actually, um, I'm in this green screen festival right now and they, they featured that in their award show, just, just brand, and th this one's gone around a lot. And the second one, okay. um, I was playing around with Do Inc. Um, they have a new text tool and I figured out a way to swap the words away. So I said, what do I need to get rid of? And you'll see emotional clutter. You can play it right now, limiting so belief. Before I do, yeah. we need to put links into uh, for people for Do Inc. and for We Videos, just yes. in case they want to know more about it. Okay, yes. ready? Here we go. <laughs> so cool. Ah, <laughs> the girls wanted to. <laughs> Thanks, I still clap at it. Um, and we actually have um, the opposite of that video we're working on where ki kids are catching positive things. And then there's another one where they're, we said, what does the earth or the planet need more of right now? And they're throwing words onto the planet like love and peace and equity. Oh. And, yeah, so it, it's, you could go both ways with this, but it's just, it, I just love watching their brains figured out. But that, that was actually kind of found out by accident. I saw this gif um, by Shaq. <laughs> oh yeah, like, I've used that words. One. I saw it. I said, I'm gonna try that and do ink. And I use We Video as well. We video I use for the music and other things. But um, but yeah, it's just we definitely have to I have to learn how to do that. I want to teach you how to do that and you and I'll come up with something and we'll make something. We'll, we'll make something. That, yeah, that I can't wait. <laughs> what, what, wait a minute. Oops. There we go. So how do you cultivate compassion for others in your life? We have to be able to do that also. 
I think I'm going to go to the next slide just yes. so we can see what we wrote there. Okay. Uh, this is you. <laughs> well, okay. So, um, well, I love Brene Brown. I yes, yeah. wrote a whole thing about her in my book <laughs> and um, I've watched everything. But when I saw this, you and I both talked about putting this in. It wasn't just yes. me. It was true. I, yeah, I love Brene Brown. I just watched another video with her and how she, but play that and then I'll tell you what, what she said. I think it's powerful. Okay. okay, I just want to let everyone know this is about two minutes or five minutes. I can't remember. I just want to warn everybody that the timing and, but the thing that's so good about it is that you might want to watch it all the way through. Okay, so here goes. <sighs> So what is empathy and why is it very different than sympathy? Empathy fuels connection. Sympathy drives disconnection. Empathy, it's a, it, very interesting. Teresa Wiseman is a nursing scholar who studied professions, very diverse professions where empathy is relevant and came up with four qualities of empathy. Perspective taking, the ability to take the perspective of another person or, or recognize their perspective as their truth. Staying out of judgment, not easy when you enjoy it as much as most of us do. <laughs> Recognizing emotion in other people and then communicating that. Empathy is feeling with people. And to me, I always think of empathy as this kind of sacred space when someone's kind of in a deep hole and they shout out from the bottom and they say, I'm stuck, it's dark, I'm overwhelmed. And then we look and we say, hey, and climb down. I know what it's like down here and you're not alone. Sympathy is, ooh, <laughs> it's bad, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, no, you want a sandwich? <laughs> um, empathy is a choice and it's a vulnerable choice because in order to connect with you, I have to connect with something in myself that knows that feeling. Rarely, if ever, does an empathic response begin with at least <laughs> I had a yeah and we do it all the time because you know what someone just shared something with us that's incredibly painful and we're trying to silver lining it I don't think that's a verb but I'm using it as one we're trying to put the silver lining around it so I had a miscarriage oh, at least you know you can get pregnant I think my marriage is falling apart at least you have a marriage <laughs> John's getting kicked out of school. At least Sarah is an A student. But one of the things we do sometimes in the face of very difficult conversations is we try to make things better. If I share something with you that's very difficult, I'd rather you say, I don't even know what to say right now. I'm just so glad you told me. Because the truth is, rarely can a response make something better. What makes something better is connection. I love that. Yes. Barbara, that's so good. Whoop. Well, I, to me, whoop, it's the phone. <laughs> well, one of the things that I, I've read all of her books, I've watched her TED talk, I've, and I had seen this one before, um, but it means so much now because I've heard several people say, well, at least, you're married, or at least you have a roof over your head, which, yes, I know, someone who's going through something, they know that they have things to be grateful for, but they might be really sad. Yeah, yeah, and we're all guilty of doing that, I'm sure, or people telling their story when you say, oh, my cat died, oh, when my cat died, you know, <laughs> but you can turn that experience that you had into true compassion and true empathy, because you know how painful pet grief is, yeah. you know? And, and I, I think this is a good reminder. I like watching this over and over again, because it does remind you and what Brene Brown is big on, and you know, this is boundaries too. And, you know, just being able to, um, you know, set boundaries of what's acceptable, what's, what's not from people. But I, I, uh, I love that, the at least. That's really powerful. <laughs> well, the way they, 
she put this together really makes sense. So a lot of people, I think they may want to watch it again and again. And it's okay because they'll see this as a video. They'll be able to watch it again and again. And again, and again. <laughs> love video. You know me. I'm I love video. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, I gotta go to the next slide. There we go. So you want to tell about these? Yeah. Um I touched it a little bit, but what this is one of the things that we do in the club is they write scripts and this one is about negative self-talk. Um, I'm just as guilty of this, but it's it's cute because there's a there's a strategy you can do. It's called put those brakes on your negative self-talk. So the kids came up with the idea to do this little skit. So I hope they can you can hear it when you play it. But go ahead and play Which it. One? Which one? Um, the big one. That the first one's just a oh this one right here. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is before we got our pod podcaster, and uh, I'm still looking to get good microphones. I was using my cell phone and I was laying on the floor. Hey, hey, mindful. Mindful. <laughs> Brought to you by the Higgins Mindful Superhero Club. Oh, that's <laughs> Well, that was one of our very first ones. So we're hoping to get better equipment, but uh, but I just find it really powerful that the kids, you know, but the best part about this, Barbara, and I've told, told, probably told you this before, is even kids that are not in my class or my club, I heard them at their lockers saying, put your brakes on that negative self-talk to each other. So that's when you know it's working. And it's like, your heart just explodes as a teacher. It's like, it works. So that's, that's kind of exactly what we're doing is giving them a chance to create these things and then watching them live it in real life and really it's help them. Amazing. We all make mistakes. And when the kids can actually support each other and say things like that, especially in the hall, that means other well, they're kids still are still doing it. it. They're like, put your brakes. And they say it to me when I do it. They're put your brakes in that negative self-talk, Miss Sandstrom. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> you're Eric, right. Cancel, clear, forgive, choose again. I, I miss working with kids, especially that age. It's so much fun. I know. Teenagers are fun. They're a rare breed. So we thought we thought about, you know, bringing in whatever, all the things you can do to practice compassion. And we said for yourself, but you, we put this together. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a, a lot of them are things that we naturally do, especially the environment and all these things. But the one that I find the most powerful is for strangers. And it reminds me of when I was um, back in college, a long time ago, I went to this, um, this church and I, I don't remember where it was actually, but it was a huge amount of people. And the speaker got up and he said, how many of you got cut off in traffic today? And no one thanked you. And then he got everybody going, how many of you opened the door for someone? They didn't thank you. And he went on and on. He had everybody riled up. And then he said, well, well, why did you do it in the first place? Did you do it for a thank you? Cause if you did, don't bother, you know? Yeah. And I was like, so, and he, then he was saying, you actually get good karma and whatever else people believe in, in return when people don't thank you. So now I get excited when someone's rude. I'm like, yeah, karma. But I also, I also think, you know, you don't know what that person's going through. You don't know if they can speak your language. You don't know if they just lost someone. You don't know. And it's not our responsibility to teach them to be polite. And you didn't do it for the thank you. Yeah. So showing compassion is, is understanding that that person might be going through something and you're, you're just, you want to open that door to 
to, to open the door. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of this when you said that. At one point, I was when I was driving over the bridge, on the I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area, and I would go over this one bridge. I thought, I'm every day I go over, I'm going to pay for the guy behind me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and at one point, um, I never expected a thank you, but at one point, this car drives up, and there's these teenagers with their hats on backwards, and they're like, "Hey, lady, that was so cool." <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that awesome? I know I, I did that once in a drive through for uh, for Starbucks or something and someone chased me down. I was like, why is that man chasing me? He just wanted to thank me. I, I thought that's dangerous. <laughs> I know, I know, but it was fun. I mean, yeah, it's maybe, nice. I it's mean, nice. like when I used, to, I'm not going to the grocery store as much, but when I used to go and someone didn't have enough money, I always say, well, I'll help. Or, or if they couldn't, I can't reach things that I'm really short. There's always somebody there to help me. I mean, people, People want to help each other. And they do, so we, they do. And, and all of this is teaching us to do that. And that's, that's yeah. at least I hope so. With all the divide right now, I pray it's it's tipping on the other, it's going the other direction. And that's- We have to. But the kids, Erica. the kids, the kids are like, they want this. They, I've seen a change in my students, Barbara. I have seen them, you know, uh, as, as, as sad as I was that first day when I drove in and I saw them all standing there with their masks on, standing six feet apart, looking petrified. Mm. all these and it was the very first day and I just started crying and I thought this isn't what school's supposed to be like but then I thought about it and I said you know what they're learning compassion they're learning patience they're learning humility they're learning life lessons that we couldn't have taught them and we kind of have a, a little bit of a spoiled society with technology you know we're all spoiled and I I have seen them change and they uh, it's just so heartwarming especially with the smaller classes right now so that's the good coming out of this is these kids. Yeah. These kids are going to change the world. I know? also see one other thing is some of them are becoming more self-confident because they're learning things on their own. They're being forced yeah. to figure it out. They're, they're not doing it all. Out. No one's. Yeah. And we need to let them try to figure it out. We had to figure it out. We had to go get encyclopedias and like, it's a huge <laughs> we process. Have, we didn't have information. To... Yeah, we didn't have phones. We didn't have Google and all those other things. Oh, so, no, and, it, yeah. and the you know, they're, they're rapid fire and they, they want things now and it's forcing them to, to use other parts of the brain. And that's why I love the green screen is they have to figure out, you know, we get to another saying, like just the problem solving they do to figure things out. It's, it's, it's nice to see. It's nice to see. So well, let's go to the next one. Yeah, let's go. Cause yeah. we talked about modeling and teaching, cultivating compassion through creativity. And a lot of things you've shown already, Erica is just have, actually brought that in but the nice thing with it is it's all around compassion which has been wonderful let's go to the next one whoops there we go should, uh, I, uh, should I show it first yeah go for it okay cute because it's almost Thanksgiving right <laughs> Twins, they're twins in the middle. Oh, they're darling. Ah, that's uh, so cute. You. Now this was this was pre-COVID, so the one we're making now, they're wearing masks, so we have uh, things popping up outside of our our mask. We actually were going to put the words in our masks, but. Um, we're, we're actually working on it right now, but I love the twins at the end. They have chocolate and vanilla and they switch them. Um, <laughs> but no, but this is an example of, you know, we did a whole lesson and this is my regular classroom, not my club, uh, gratitude on the magic of gratitude and what we're grateful for. And we did this whole thing. And I said, we need to express that on the green screen. So we said, it's Thanksgiving. Uh -huh. So I had this idea. I'm like, could we be the feathers? And then the kids started practicing. They're like, yeah, we could do this. And, and it was just adorable how it came out. And um, yeah, so that's one way to take compassion or anything. I love the colors too. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but no, 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 you go I for look it. At all the colors, they're not wearing any patterns or all, they must have really planned it. You can tell you're an artist and that's why you're so creative because you notice, because I noticed that too. And, uh, and yeah, it's, 
they, they don't have any patterns on. Isn't that I love it. They, they really thought yeah. it through. That is so darling. I, let's see what the next one is. Oh, this one is fun. But before you get to that, the idea that creativity heals. Yes. And do you know that live, laugh, love is on all of my um, welcome mats on outside my house? <laughs> Look at that. And I threw them in there. And that was one of my very first projects when I started this um, marriage between uh, mindfulness, social emotional learning, and green screen. That's when my life just changed because those were my two passions. And boom, you bring them together and it's just exploded. And the live, laugh, love, the kids had to figure out how to, you know, make these letters. And, but creativity does heal and it heals all of us. I mean, I always ask people, what's your creative outlet? Yeah. My mom, oh my gosh, my mom is so creative. She, but she's always picking up a new craft or something. She's always making something. My dad too, he's a wood carver and a million other things. And, but so what is yours? I, mean, I paint. I, I uh, used to teach, I had a paint and sip company called Painter's Pub for, for a couple of years. And I, I love to paint. What do you do, Barbara? For healing? Well, I'm, there's several. I'm a writer. Yes. No, you're a writer. Yes. I'm a writer, but I also uh, dance. I was an art major at one point, but that didn't work because my mom's an artist and I couldn't compare with what she was doing. Um, <laughs> but I also knit and I sewed my kids clothes. I mean, there's so many things I, I like to experiment and try. At one point I had stained glass and then I did ceramics. So I have a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, you do. And I knew you were creative that way. That's so why I asked you. And, but I, sometimes I'll pick up my coloring book. It's over there with um, mandalas, uh, Mandela. I can never say it right. Mandela's in it and Mandela. just color because when you're, when you're doing that or even when I'm on the green screen, when I'm on doing, it's therapy for me. And um, when you're doing that you're not thinking about other, th other things. Yeah. And it is meditation in that oh. respect. So I always find yeah. art is meditation. Well, right now, my husband and I are doing puzzles. Ah, puzzles. So we, are have awesome. a, we do puzzles because it just calms us down. And, yes. Uh, yes. And that like, people, when you hear the word meditate, don't think you have to sit on top of a tree and, and mm -hmm. do that. You can pick up some coloring and just do some breathing. And, um, yeah. but yeah, um, Fugal Fun, uh, Trisha Fugelstein, she is an amazing person to follow. She is really, she's doing a lot of what I do. And she, um, she always says that it's therapy for her. She's, she teaches animation and green screen as well, but her, uh, her kids do some amazingly creative things and it's very healing. I the, love it. Okay, so well, this, yeah, go ahead. This video, um, you created that uh, for a contest you're in, right? Yes, right. And it's happening right now. I don't know when this will air, but um, you can vote on greenscreenfest.com. Um, you can see it on my Twitter. But the kids uh, and I created a, a video that was chosen by this huge festival out of Australia. So it's it's there's winners from all over the world. So if we get the most votes, we win people's choice, choice award. So I made this promo to get people to to vote for us. And the kids kids came up with all the ideas, and we had a blast. They have their math on. To go for it. This is fun. I might not be able to watch it all, but let's we'll, we'll see how that. Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> they better go there and vote for this. Oh, this part was our partner. We'll put a link to it so they can get to it. Oh, thank you. That's nice. Yeah. Oh my gosh. How did you do that? Now I got to figure that one out. <laughs> I know. That's actually, you and I already kind of started it. So I think you know. Yeah. Um, and what I had behind there, too, was um, our school. That was a. They had done a. Uh, that's so my cool brain, my brain just stopped what are those called um oh dro the droid droids what are the <laughs> what are the uh, cameras uh, called anyway that's that's oh, our uh, yeah i know what you mean yeah i couldn't think of it uh which oh, I have. now you got me not okay we'll get it <laughs> I, I have one too i know i know what it is okay so we're going to go to the last slide this is fun this is us you ready <laughs> <laughs> it's so silly looking. 
that was fun. Yeah. Well, the we thing is, so though, well, we've never we've never met in person, so people are like, "How do you do that?" And uh, you, I mean, it was fun trying to figure that out, especially the the mugs. Well, <laughs> I didn't do it. Right. I made several takes. You did the first one, so and I was going ding ding ding. But the fun thing was. Um, we did the, we did practice over Zoom and, and Erica has me sliding in. And the first one, I kept sliding. I went over all the way and she goes, well, we need bloopers. <laughs> I have a lot of outtakes and that's the best part. I mean, I've had a lot of bumps and bruises and especially when that last one with the students, and you have to be really careful, but it's, it's fun so to fun. Fun watch them figure it out. You know, so I'm going to stop sharing and um, let everybody just to end, just to talk to you for a second. Because yeah. um, then we can see see more of you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and this I like. Oh <laughs> uh, no! This has been really wonderful. We decided to put our backgrounds, and we're learning more about different types of things you can do. And we'll probably, I think, we're going to have to do some more of this because this is fun. This is fun, and uh, we speak each other's language big time. And <laughs> I, you know, you just meet those people in your life you just connect with, and and this woman is. You're, you're just an amazing soul. So I appreciate you having me on. And I appreciate this conversation, but in the many more to come and many more green screen shenanigans with you. Oh, well, when I come to San Francisco, I will, you know, see my sister. Oh, you're staying here. Oh you're yeah. Here. I know. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, no, no. We're very lucky. And Erica, I really, this has been fun even putting this together. And I hope people have a lot of fun watching it and re-watching parts of it and follow you and and also get to vote for <laughs> your video too with the kids made because um it's all about the kids anyway right <laughs> it really is i mean i just you know i don't know what to do without my my uh my teens in my life but uh yeah it's it's wonderful it's just wonderful to to, to have them happy again too this um i've been even working with my remote kids doing some things like this Having that video, video is so powerful and, and you don't have to have a green screen to do it even at home. So definitely find me, follow me. I'm making things for people to teach them how to use video to heal, to heal the, these kids right now in, in what they're dealing with. So you'll be able to have a copy of this and a copy of the handout and then there's all the links that are gonna be there. So thank you so much, Erica. The reward is in the journey, you know? So yeah, <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait for teachers to play like you did with me. So this will be oh, fun. Yeah, and they better because it's so much fun. So yeah. you have a wonderful rest of your day. And well, thank, thank you, you so too. much. This was wonderful, Erica. Bye. Bye. And, oh, wait a minute. Heart. I, I can't make a heart. I love my heart. Heart. <laughs> Bye, dear. <laughs>